Hi, I'm Rachel in Pennsylvania. I'm going to show you how to make the three wing worldwide boomerang. You'll make it from materials easily available anywhere in the world for only a few pennies. It's pretty easy and a lot quicker and easier than trying to make one out of plywood. The flying radius is small enough for a small yard, maybe even inside if your ceiling is high enough. No need to go to a park or field, it's light enough and soft enough that there is little chance of causing injuries or breaking any windows. This design makes it easy to switch from right-handed to left-handed throwing. Most of all, you'll have the satisfaction of making a boomerang that really flies and really comes back, something that you have made with your own hands. I will also show you how to throw and adjust your boomerang for spectacular flights, but first, a little background. I've always liked to build things, and especially robots. Then when Boomerang Ninja Logan Broadbent and his girlfriend and manager, Jamie Kinton, came to my high school, they got us crazy about boomerangs. Logan is mostly known for viral videos of his spectacular boomerang tricks, and he amazed us. But mostly, he took the time to teach our class about the science that makes boomerangs really work and how to design them. That would cause you to have to go into that. Now if you're adding weight to the center of the boomerang, it's going to cause the boomerang to lay over quicker, which means it's going to fly a bit higher. I'm planning to major in aerospace engineering, and boomerangs are a great, intuitive way to explore wings and airfoils. Okay, so that's what's happening. Because it's following the radius. You'll need a manila file folder. We got old, repurposed ones from the friendly secretaries at our school. You'll also need four tongue depressors. Your school nurse might be able to help if you just need a few and if you explain. If you buy a box of them from a medical supply store or internet, they cost just pennies each. But they have to be about 6 inches or 152 millimeters long, not the shorter popsicle sticks. You can use any of these glues, but a low temperature hot glue gun is fast and convenient. The small, 10 watt hot glue guns are safe. You'll also need scissors, tape, a marker, and a ruler. Print out this pattern linked below. In the print dialog box, make sure there is no scaling or fit to page, which could shrink the image. You can check the scale here. These wood sticks give the boomerang its strength and we'll call them spars. Let's cut the pattern in half and tape one spar down so it doesn't slide around. Don't use tongue depressors that are badly warped. If you're using hot glue, get some on the hub. Quickly get another spar lined up with the pattern lines and push down before the glue cools. Do it again for the third spar. If you use another kind of glue that takes longer to become strong, it's best to use a clamp to hold everything together while the glue sets. In a pinch, you could even use a clothespin. We'll let this dry. If you threw just the spars and knew how to adjust them, you might get this assembly to sort of act like a boomerang, but it's going to be so much better with the airfoils. The wings are wider and better shaped with airfoils. It's the airfoils that really make a boomerang fly. You only need half of a file folder to make the airfoils. You could cut them out ahead of time with a paper cutter, or use the other half of the pattern page. Make three tape donuts and stick them in the middle of the rectangles, but on the back side of the airfoil pattern. Press it on the file folder. Cut out three rectangles carefully on the black solid lines. Peel off the patterns and tape. Here is a close-up end view of the airfoil we'll make. The thick paper is folded over to make a sleeve that slides into the spar. We're going to put tape on a long side, but only half of the tape goes in the manila folder. The other half sticks out over the edge. Line up a fourth tongue depressor edge to edge like this before pushing the tape on. If you don't get it right, just unstick it and try again. Press the tape on hard. Flip it over so the tape is on the bottom. Fold the tongue depressor over, which just folds the tape, and fold the tongue depressor over just one more time, which folds the paper this time. Push hard so it makes a strong crease. Unwrap it and peel the tape and the paper off the stick, holding onto the corner of the paper. 
Position it so the short side of the tape are away from you and sticking up. Push the stick against the short side and hold it there with your thumbs as you fold down the top with your fingers. When it's almost down, get your thumbs out of the way and press the tape hard. You've made your first airfoil. Slide the tongue depressor out and use it to form two more airfoils. It looks complicated, but after you do the first one, it's easy. Back to the spars now that the glue is dry. Boomerangs need a little bit of dihedral, which is the upward slant of the wings. It is easy to see dihedral on airplane wings and birds, but it's so subtle on boomerangs that I can't really see it. But we have a dihedral test, a spin test. Spin your spar assembly on a flat table, flip it over, and try again. Try to see if it spins easier on one side than another. It might be obvious, with the tips dragging one way, but easily spinning the other. But even if it's almost the same, try to see which way it spins best. With it on the side that spins the best, mark a T on the hub. If there wasn't much difference between the sides, then bend the spars up a little until it more clearly spins better when the T is on top. That T that you just marked will always face towards you, later when you throw your boomerang. This isn't easy to get mixed up in the next part, so let's take it step by step. Make sure the T is on top and one spar is pointing towards you. Make sure that the tape and seam side of the airfoil are down. If you are right-handed, the hollow part that the stick slides into will be on the right. Rotate so another spar points towards you. Remember, T on top, tape seam down, spar on your right side. If you are left-handed, the T will still face up, the tape seam will face down, but the strut will be on the left instead. When you throw and spin this boomerang, the thick, rounded spar part will have the leading edge. If you threw your boomerang now, the airfoils will be flung off like this. So we'll tape them. I want to make it easy to switch between a right and a left-handed boomerang, so I'm going to fold over and tape sticky side to sticky side at the end so I have a not sticky handle. Make the airfoil exactly at the end of the spar and tape it down with the non-stick part of the airfoil. You don't have to chamfer the corners, but these corners are the first place to get curled up, so I cut off a bit. Later, I want to show you some adjustments that will create amazing flights, but you want to test fly, right? Make a fist and hold the tip where the wood is. Remember the T needs to be up and then facing you. When the boomerang leaves your hand, it should be almost straight up and down, at about 1 o'clock if you're right-handed. And 11 o'clock if you're left-handed. Many beginners unconsciously slant the boomerang too much towards the horizontal, so the lift is too much curving up, and not enough curving to the side. It's the lift and the curve to the side that makes the boomerang come back. If you make sure that your hand is high when you release, as high as your head, you get the best throwing angle naturally. Here's another beginning tip. The first couple of times you throw, try to use just your wrist and elbow, not your shoulder. See? Your hand and forearm move, but your upper arm does not have to move. The elbow is moving and the wrist is moving, but the shoulder is not moving. That will give you a feel for the right way to throw, and you'll see how the boomerang should turn. Then go ahead and use your shoulder for more power, but still snap your wrist for spin and throw with the same angle. Many beginners throw the boomerang upward too much. This is too steep. The reason we throw gently upward or level is because boomerang's wings will create their own lift. If the airfoils get bashed up, just bend them back. As we already touched on, Logan showed us how airplane wings lift mostly upward, but since we throw boomerang sideways, a lot of the lift is sideways at first. So if you throw a boomerang with your right hand, it should turn left and vice versa for left-handed throw. 
But if it does not turn or even veers off in the wrong direction, then you might have to twist the wingtips a little so they have a little bit more lift. Just hold on to the wood inside and twist gently. A lot of angle of attack will make your boomerang fly in smaller circles, maybe enough to fly inside if you develop a gentle touch. But you can get too much of a good thing. More lift creates more drag. If your boomerang runs out of spin mid-flight, then you probably have too much angle of attack. Remember the spin test for dihedral? We've found that if our boomerang does not have enough dihedral, then it flies too low, sometimes even hitting the ground. Having lots of dihedral makes the boomerang gain altitude and then gently hover down. You can still bend in more dihedral even when the airfoils are already taped on. If you want to make very subtle dihedral or angle of attack adjustments, you can only bend one or two wings. You don't have to adjust all three. If there is a lot of wind, then consider flying a kite unless you like to run a lot. But if there's not too much wind, and say it's something from this direction, then you're right-handed. Throw out about 45 degrees to the right of incoming wind. Wind is usually calmer or absent at night, and throwing worldwide boomerangs in the dark is a blast with LED headlamps. Procession also affects boomerang flight. Logan demonstrates precession with a bicycle wheel held on one side with a string. Of course it flops over, but when he spins it, not only does it stay up, it rotates. Our friends also showed precession with a fidget spinner. And you see it on tops. Precession is what makes the boomerang curve back around to you, and it is also what makes it flatten out from vertical to horizontal mid-flight. Adding weight or mass from tape to the extreme case of taping on pennies can change how precession acts. Going to the other extreme, cutting the tongue depressors in half reduces weight, so the turning cycle can be very small, almost an inside boomerang. Well, a high ceiling would also be a good thing. What about other ways to make boomerangs? We discovered accidentally that our boomerang only needs two airfoils to fly well, as long as there is a stick for balance. As you can see, various adjustments, as well as how you throw the boomerang, create an infinite variety of flight patterns. The only way to become a boomerang master is by experimenting, practice, practice, and more practice. There is another video about mass-producing boomerangs, and another one about making a sturdy cardboard case for your boomerang. If you like do-it-yourself science videos like this one, please subscribe and ring that bell.